for the last 25 years, I have been carrying out a practice to bring healing and protection to the earth uh, by uh, filling and burying uh, what are called earth treasure vases. And this was a practice that I received um, in 1990 from a 106 year old Tibetan Lama living in a cave in Nepal, way up in the high mountains of Nepal, very remote area. And I had this incredible opportunity to go and meet, literally go and meet the old wise man in the cave. And I was walking up the path thinking, what is my question? And what came to me was um, my deep concern for what was happening to the earth. And um, I decided to ask him, what can we do to bring healing and protection to the earth in these times? So for the last, these many years, I've been uh, carrying out this practice and it means going into uh, war zones, places of ecological devastation, um, sacred places, uh, inner cities, remote, um, wild parts of the world, mountaintops, sources of rivers, um, all kinds of amazing communities, and bringing these little clay pots that people pour their hearts into and uh, doing a meditation that originates in the Tibetan tradition but which has uh, vastly transcended its original cultural, um, its cultural origins. I remember always caring a lot about the earth and loving this planet so much. And when we began to see uh, the changes that we're really seeing now, um, I began to feel very concerned about what was happening to, to this beautiful blue-green planet we call home. And um, I happen to live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where uh, right across the valley from where I live is the Los Alamos National Laboratory, which is the birthplace of the atomic bomb. And um, the radioactive waste that is coming out of that, um, that location is um, affecting the fabric of life on Earth. This is not just happening in New Mexico where I live, but it's happening all over the world with, with the, um, the poisoning of, of the Earth. And so that was on my mind when I met the old Lama as well. And um, so I asked him the question, what can we do to bring healing and protection to the earth? When I began with this practice, when I was given this practice, um, my rational mind thought, how can a little clay pot filled with prayers and symbolic offerings affect something like radioactive waste or um, bring peace where there's war or um, end climate change or rape of women, you know, all of the, the things that are going on in the world that create suffering and imbalance. The other part of my, my mind, my, my heart, um, was willing to try anything because the situation is so dire. And I think that indigenous cultures and, and some of the old, old ancient wisdom traditions of this planet have so much to teach us about how to, how to maintain harmony and balance and bring peace on earth, sustain each other in relationship to uh, the earth. I took one of the little treasure vases into uh, Liberia about five years after the end of a very brutal civil war. And um, there I met 
a whole community of people in the in the worst fought area of the war, which uh, actually borders uh, Guinea and Sierra Leone up in northern Liberia. One of the gentlemen that I met um, was a former rebel general who had fought uh, and commanded troops in that area. And um, he asked me to teach him how to meditate. That was one of the ways I got there. And I couldn't believe that he, he wanted to learn how to meditate. But so there we were. We took the treasure vase into uh, this part of Liberia. And there must have been 500 people who came from three countries to pray for peace into that little clay pot and offer the most intense prayers I've ever seen in all of my 25 years with this practice. And they poured their hearts into this little vessel. And their wish for peace was so strong that when we buried the, va the vase in the, in the village where the elders had selected it to go, after it was buried at the base of a kola tree, um, the elders said to me, well, now what? We want to remember these prayers. This was important for us. And I said, well, what, what would that look like to you? And after some discussion, it was decided that they wanted to build what's called a palaver hut or a peace hut in that village right next to where the treasure vase was buried as a place that they could gather to come together to remember their prayers for peace, to reconcile and resolve conflict if it were to arise, and to reclaim their lives. And so our organization, Alliance for the Earth, raised the money to build the first peace hut. We now have three peace huts in conflict-prone regions of uh, Liberia. We have a whole team that's headed up by this once former rebel general who uh, is now a, a, an incredible peace builder who has learned the practice of mindfulness meditation and is bringing it into all of his activities and trainings with um, former combatants, former child soldiers, and the women of, of Liberia who are such a powerful force for peace in that country. So um, that is going to continue. That work is carrying on. They now have their own NGO called the Peace Hut Alliance, and uh, they are taking this as far and as wide as they possibly can. And all of that is from one little clay pot filled with some prayers and some offerings. So uh, anything is possible. And as far as I'm concerned, that, uh, that story is a miracle. Everything about that story is a miracle. And when we come into alignment with each other and with our deepest heart of hearts and what we care about most passionately, um, not just for ourselves, but for our whole communities and for the earth. Um, we align ourselves with something so much larger. And that, that alignment is what creates miracles. It creates the opportunity for something new to happen. And it, these things happen naturally. They happen easily. They occur spontaneously. You can't plan for them, but that's what happens when we come together. And that's what we need. There's a couple of terms that get used interchangeably, which I feel are very different. One is sacred activism, and the other is subtle activism. And um, I'd like to make a distinction. In my case, um, what the story I just told you is not subtle at all. The practice itself is a practice of meditation. It's a practice of prayer. And it's a practice of making offerings, which maybe from one point of view might be considered pretty subtle. Um, certainly going inside and becoming quiet and finding inner peace is a subtle act. Um, the practice itself is a sacred 
activity. It's asking us, no matter what your spiritual or religious orientation is, to find that source of inspiration and wisdom within yourself and, and draw from it in whatever form that looks like and bring it into action. In the case of working with the treasure vases, um, we, we put these symbolic offerings into the vase with all of our prayers for whatever is relevant in the area that we're, we're going. So in Liberia, the prayers were very different than the prayers for Australia, for example, or um, uh, England, or Hawaii, or um, Colombia in South America. So each of those locations um, has a different call, a different prayer, a different need, a different intention. But um, when we access those, uh, that part of ourselves that cares, that is connected to something so much larger than ourself, our little selfish um, person, <laughs> We're, we're putting something out into the world that is alive, that, ha that ripples out for all time. I always say that when we go into ceremony, we are entering sacred time. And in that place, there is no time, actually. Time falls away, and we, can, we don't know if we've been there for three minutes or three hours. But in that place, everything happens. And that's where the miracles uh, arise. This practice is, is, is very sacred, but it's also very practical. Thich Nhat Hanh is, is my great teacher, and he talks about engaged Buddhism. We engage with, with what is going on around us. We're not sitting in the comfort uh, of our own living room, just meditating. The Dalai Lama, another great example, Dalai Lama said, prayer is not enough. You have to work. You have to turn those prayers into action. And so the, the practice with the treasure vases has, has, has taught me all of this because we do sit in the comfort of our living room and direct our prayers and our intentions to places in the world where there is a need for that. Um, but then we take this this little clay pot out into the world and we take it somewhere and we enter that community and we ask for the elders to meet with us and we honor them and we ask them if they would like this, you know, and we, we offer it. And then we gather with people um, and we invite their prayers, you know, and those prayers go into the ground. They go into the earth. And in that way, we're making a connection also to our Mother Earth. We're joining in relationship with the web of life. If we want to see change in the world, we have to be the change. We, we have to be the change. And, you know, many of us have been out there on the front lines as activists uh, for many years. And what, what's actually changed? You know, it, 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 it hasn't worked, has it? So we have to be that. We have to be the peace. We, we, we need to embody what it is that we want to see in the world. And um, so a practice like this, um, a practice, any kind of practice of meditation um, or prayer brings us into that, that place within ourselves where something new can happen, where we, you know, we can catch our breath, we can stop for a minute,
And out of that place, we begin to see a new way. We see, we see what's needed. We're less reactive. We are um, more loving, caring, compassionate. Not to say that protest isn't sometimes called for. I think again of the women of Liberia who uh, w they stopped that war because they went out on the street and they fasted and they prayed and they demonstrated for peace. They'd had enough of war, of their sons and husbands and fathers getting killed and engaging in this violent conflict. And so they, 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 they finally said, we've had enough. And they, they stopped taking care of their sons and fathers and husbands. And they went out on the street and said, enough is enough. But they did it nonviolently. It was Muslim and Christian women who came together to pray, which is unusual. And they stopped a war. And the women who stopped the war got a, a Nobel Prize prize for that. And they elected the first woman president of any country in Africa. Protest is called for, but, but when, when it works is when we're connected to something, as I said, so much larger than ourselves. And the change that is needed to sustain the planet now is in a way, something that we can't conceive of from the mind that created it. It's hard to, to know what to do from inside the system that has got us into this mess. So we're looking for a new story. We're looking for a, a new way of being. Um, and maybe that new way of being is also a very old way of being. And uh, we need to bring our worlds together. I like to think of um, cultivating inner peace as preventative medicine. That uh, before things get out of hand in our own lives, for example, um, if we're practicing deeply, uh, cultivating calm and peace in our own lives, um, we're able to see so much more clearly and act so much more compassionately and so much less reactively um, that we also know what to do in response to problems that arise in our lives. So um, before things get out of hand, before conflict, arises. You know, we take care of ourselves in this way. As we become more stable in that place of calm and peace within ourselves um, and within our immediate relations, um, then we're able to, the, to extend out, you know, further and further in our work and in our lives um, to addressing some of the larger issues and problems. We see through the, the cracks, the little tiny cracks where the light comes in like the song goes. We begin to see and something new opens up that we hadn't seen before. And that's where the solutions are. That's where the, the gifts that sustain life are. And we have so much to learn from nature, you know. Because nature, it's all there. You know, we make it so much more complicated by getting in the way. All my good ideas I think are so important and so brilliant. They actually make more of a mess of things, usually. And when I can offer up what I think is so uh, the way it should be and uh, uh, allow for this new thing to come through or to unfold, I'm amazed at what, what uh, transpires. 
and the solutions like the peace huts in Liberia and what has arisen from them, uh, you know, magic is happening there. Miracles are unfolding that are creating a sustainable peace in that country. This quality of caring that we connect with through a practice like the Earth Treasure Vases, um, in relationship to places that we love and care about, or communities that are special to us. Um, in Buddhism, we call that bodhicitta, the, the, the wish to, uh, that all beings may be happy and have peace in their lives. And that we realize we're not alone. We're in this together. It's all connected. So where, where I leave off and you begin is a permeable membrane. So what I cultivate within myself is affecting you and what, is, what you are cultivating is affecting me. So let's turn our attention together to cultivating what we know is going to benefit the whole earth. We're all connected to the trees and the rocks and the rivers and the mountains and each other. And we each have a role to play in fulfilling uh, the purpose of life on earth. And so let's turn our attention to what is going to support the fulfillment of the purpose of life on earth for each of us. And together, um, contribute to this beautiful dance of life. Mother Earth is such an incredible embodiment of, that we are also a part of. So what I cultivate ripples out into this, this fabric that connects us. We're living at a time when we have the opportunity to wake up collectively, not just individually anymore, but collectively, because the planet is screaming. And we are looking death and impermanence in the face. All around us, we can see that uh, life is in a precarious balance, and nature is also uh, the, the, the balance of nature is at stake. So this is a, providing us, those of us that are alive right now, with the most incredible opportunity to wake up and to participate in uh, restoring balance and harmony and peace on earth in, the, in our time. What is there that's more exciting than that? And I think about Thich Nhat Hanh, who is one of my great teachers, and he said many years ago, he said, the next Buddha will be a Sangha. And what he meant by that was, that we're all in this together. Sangha is community in Buddhist terms. And so we're so connected now all over the, the earth. There's no place where I leave off and you begin. We are in this together. If we want to um, turn our situation around, we, it's imperative for us to acknowledge that. And that's what is um, getting catalyzed naturally by those of us who are listening to the voice of Mother Earth speaking to us now. Gaia is calling us home. She's calling us to come back 
to our true selves, to each other, to our interrelated web of life, interbeing. And when we wake up, when we understand what that means and what it means for us, we're home. And when we come home, we care. We care. And we're not going to let this go down the drain. I think it's about finding what each of us is called to most deeply, that we love the most, that turns us on and keeps us awake at night, you know. Uh, and then do that, because that's what we're born for. And life is very precious. We never know when our lives will come to an end. So living in such a way that we are aware of this precious human life that we've been given the precious opportunity to participate in life with each other for the benefit of all life. Let's not miss that moment. Let's not miss that moment. That moment is now. These kinds of practices of the earth treasure vases or um, other synchronized meditations, um, opportunities to pray together, not just in a little room, one-on-one -on -one or with a few people, but all over the planet at the same time. These experiences create a, a field of intention that um, brings us into an experience of our collective body, our oneness. And when we align in our deepest, most heartfelt prayers for peace and feel the love, that is the best medicine, not only for ourselves, but for, for life. So even though it's not a protest on the street, or you can't see the result of that right away. I know from my own experience with these little treasure vases that the, the seed that is planted in these kinds of uh, collective experiences are having the most profound effect that we could possibly imagine. And we're not going to be able to figure it out. It's so much bigger than, than us. But as we come into alignment with each other in this way, we're entering this field that is taking the whole planet to another level in our evolution and in our consciousness. So yes, uh, we are at a place in time as a species where we are uh, evolving and our consciousness is taking a huge uh, evolutionary leap. Uh, so, so let's be a part of that. Let's choose to be a part of that and not that other thing that's really not going anywhere anymore. That's just bringing us down, causing destruction. Let's focus on this, this one over here. It's really good and it's really exciting and it's really beautiful. I wanted you to meet one of the little earth treasure vases. And um, uh, this, is, this is what they look like. Um, this is the, the pot 
the pot was um, made in Nepal by the, the lamas. Um, the clay was mixed with relics and sacred substances gathered uh, from all the lineages of um, Tibetan Buddhism and uh, consecrated uh, through much practice and given to us to then fill with offerings and take and bury in, in the earth. So these are, I like to say, this is its party dress. These are the silks that represent the five colors of five Buddha families, the five directions, meaning the center and the four directions of the mandala of the five Buddha families. And um, so this is what we do after every meditation with the, the practice of the earth treasure vases is we remove um, the silks and open it up. Um, and after having done uh, a meditation together, um, we open it up and remove the cork and then um, pass it around for everyone to hold and feel. And people who um, have those rational minds that don't necessarily believe in these things, um, they often will take it into their hands and kind of go, oh my goodness, um, it feels like it's alive. And it really is like a living being that begins to take on all of our prayers and offerings. And so we, we hold it and we um, just offer a prayer or maybe put something symbolic into it that is um, an offering that is meaningful and precious and symbolic of, of healing or protection uh, or um, some enrichment for the earth and for, for all beings. I want to make an offering into this uh, earth treasure vase on behalf of all of us who are watching and um, give you an example of what of, of a kind of an offering. There's so many things you could offer, but um, I would like to offer a peacock feather um, because one of the things they, they say, a story they tell in, in, in the Buddhist world is that a peacock uh, can eat all kinds of poisonous things and they turn it into the beauty of their feathers, their adornments, their, um, their tails. And uh, so the, the peacock offering, the peacock feather offering is in the spirit of uh, transmuting the poison that we um, uh, are living with on the earth today and um, turning it into beauty. So let's, um, let's Pray together that that may be so, that those of us who are um, creatively inclined may uh, see ways to transmute the poison and turn it into uh, beauty, to clean up our mess and to take nourishment from it. So I offer this peacock feather into this vase that it may be so. In this moment, what I really wanted to do was to offer this uh, to you and to take a moment now to um, invite you to formulate your own prayer and intention uh, to be received by this holy vessel and to also connect with your own heart and being as a, a holy vessel, an embodiment of peace and healing for the earth at this time. And I know that um, this, this vessel is receiving what you are uh, intending. May it be of benefit 
to all beings. May our prayers be heard. May they be realized. May they be, may the seeds of our prayers for peace and healing be watered. May the roots go, grow strong and may they sprout in all kinds of unexpected ways to bring, bring about the, the solutions to all of our planet's problems. Alalaho. <laughs>